and welcome to Iftar Insights Inside Edition episode 23. Today we have a special for you from Muslim migrants living in Miami, one from Pakistan and one from Saudi. So we all know that Pakistanis love their cricket. However, these boys take it to a different level. They wake up early in the morning before Suhoor so that they could play cricket, yes. And although it's a little different for them in Miami compared to what it was like in Pakistan, because in Miami it's a little more quiet, in Pakistan it's more like a festival. So there's more activity and more fun and joy. However, that does not stop this family from practicing their family culture and even their food culture, in fact. So today, Sister Herma, who is only 17, she's going to narrate our story and show us what they do in Miami, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. We are the Aziz family, and this is our home. Today, we're going to tell you how we like to spend our Ramadan. This is us getting ready to go have iftar at my brother's house. Iftar is a very important part of Ramadan because it's where you open your fast, but it's also where you get closer to your family. That's why we decided to go to my brother's house today. We decided to get there pretty early so we can settle in and have enough time to catch up on any prayers, read some Quran, and maybe learn some new stuff about our religion. After all, Ramadan is about getting closer to God and in touch with your faith. And of course, another very important part of iftar is food. We'll get more into the types of food later, but after we open our fast, we like to go straight ahead to go to Maghrib prayer. After all, Maghrib prayer and iftar is at the same time. And of course, growing up in a Pakistani home, our iftar food consists mostly of Pakistani food, such as spring rolls that we like to deep fry. We like to eat these with a special kind of sauce that you can buy at the store or make at home. And of course, the most essential part of any iftar should be the fruits and vegetables that we try to put into our diet so we can make back all of the energy we lost that day. This is a little bit of what our food looks like when it's ready for iftar. As you can see, everything is fried to perfection and everything looks brown and golden. Here is a dish that we like to eat that consists of potatoes and spinach. It's really important to have your fruits and vegetables, as I said before, after a long day of fasting. This is how we fast, this is how we eat, and this is how we spend our Ramadan. Thank you for joining in with us. Assalamu alaikum. And Jazakallah khair, Hurma, for that very insightful and concise presentation. We'd like to say early Eid Mubarak to all of you, to the mummies, uh, Rafat and Halida, to the nine-year-olds, Zena and Huria, and to seven-year-old, Soha Karishi. And of course, we've heard from Hurma and um, special special ingredients to grandma Bilkis Begum. You would have noticed that the men were not around because they were at work so special ingredients to the men and it's coming from all of us at Buzz Events and Entertainment and Impression Studios and the wider world in fact would be viewing this presentation as well. I mean and the Eid Mubarak in advance once more from all of us and from myself as well inshallah. So Asma mentioned at the very start of today's presentation that it is a dual presentation of Muslim migrants in Miami and our first family the Aziz family from Pakistan. We're now about to switch gears and share some other insightful information with you this time around from a brother who originally hails from Saudi Arabia. He himself was born in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia and has been living in Miami since 2017 and prior to that he lived for about two years in in Virginia. Uh, he is married and has one daughter and since 2017 after moving to Miami he has been uh, delivering khutbahs, lectures and leading the Salah at the Al-Ihsan Masjid in Miami as well. It is our esteemed pleasure to introduce a brother who is going to take a page from uh, our family in Pakistan who spoke about playing cricket before the Suhoor. This is coincidentally enough the subject matter 
chapter that he would like to focus on because as much as this is an iftar presentation an iftar series he really would like to impress upon us the importance of the suhoor uh, and hopefully we'll be able to if we've not been paying attention to it as much before uh, you know continue to implement it or implement it before the this ramadan is completed and if not and this message reaches you uh, before the next ramadan inshallah of 2021 then by 2021 maybe we'd start paying more attention to it then and follow the guidelines that our beloved brother muhammad is about to share with us inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my name is muhammad al-zambaqi i am a graduate student here in the united states of america I live in Miami, in which I have met many brothers from Trinidad and Tobago. I have learned about the culture of the country and the food of the country and many other important and interesting issues about the country. Today, inshallah, I'll be talking uh, shortly about the importance of suhoor, in which is an important meal that the Muslim should care about and have during during the during the fasting fasting days the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to have suhoor and inshallah i'll be saying some of the ahadith that were narrated by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first one is a ahad, hadith that was narrated by anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he 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 said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said eat suhoor for in suhoor there is blessing so this hadith indicates that the fasting person is commanded to eat suhoor because there is a great deal of goodness and blessing spiritual and for the body so the prophet وسلم, mentioned the blessing so as to encourage us to eat suhoor also it was narrated from jabir عنه, that the prophet وسلم, said Whoever wants to fast, let him eat something for suhoor. So this command is classified as mustahab. So it is a sunnah and mustahab for a fasting person to have suhoor before he or she starts the fasting. Alhamdulillah, suhoor is a blessed meal and there are many blessings and benefits of having suhoor. For example, it gives strength for worship and helps one to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the day by praying, reading Quran and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with the intention to have strength to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more during the fasting day, inshallah the Muslim will get more reward by having the suhoor. Also, the one who eats suhoor will be encouraged to fast more because fasting is less difficult for the one who eats suhoor. So, he or she will be encouraged to fast and it will not be so difficult for him or for her. And that is, this is uh, important also for kids when we are training them to start fasting. Having suhoor will, be, will benefit them and help them during the fasting day and will encourage them to be fasting more during the day and inshallah for the whole for the whole month of Ramadan. Also an important benefit is that the person who eats suhoor gets up at the end of the night to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua and pray. For that is when prayers are answered and it's the time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels send blessings upon those who eat suhoor. So it is important for the one who eats suhoor to delay the suhoor till the end of the night just before the the uh, the fajr time and this was the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so a companion was was asked when is the best time to 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 have suhoor he uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, is pleased with him said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to finish the suhoor just before the adhan of, of the fajr. So they ask they asked him how much time it is between the suhoor and the fajr adhan, 
he said as long as it takes to recite 50 ayat, 50 verses. This was narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So this time that it might be around 30 minutes before before the the uh, Fajr Adhan. And there is no specific meal and food that is specific uh, Import, uh, that is the best for for um, and there is there is there is no specific meal and time uh, for the suhoor but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the best suhoor for the believer is dates so whatever the muslim have for suhoor is good as long as it is delayed just before the fajr but following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by having suhoor is good for, for the body so this is an important part of the fasting that the Muslim do during the, the, the month of Ramadan and during any any of any uh, other fasting outside the month of Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to worship him the best that we can and follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is what I wanted to share with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all, all of us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. A special thank you to Brother Muhammad Al Zambagi, originally from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, now residing in Miami, Florida. Thank you very much, Brother, uh, for your presentation today, and thank you very much for the reminders as they pertain to the suhoor as well, inshallah, or the sahri or sahur as some people refer to it. You know, so Jazakallah khair once more and early. Eid greetings to you, your wife, and your, uh, your 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 lovely daughter as well, inshallah. May Allah be pleased with all of your efforts during this month, and thank you once more uh, for the knowledge that you have imparted um, onto us today, inshallah. This has brought us, however, to the end of this very short presentation today of Iftar Insights Inside Edition. Uh, Muslim migrants in Miami, what a very different presentation. But tomorrow, we also have something uh, in store for you that is very, very special, inshallah. Tomorrow, we will meet up with a doctor who is originally from Pakistan, now residing and working in Guyana. And tomorrow, inshallah, he will tell us what life was like in Pakistan, what life is like now in Guyana, compare the Ramadan celebrations in both of those countries, the good, the bad, the indifferent, or just simply the different. And also, he will give us the Guyanese perspective, share some uh, light with us on his Guyanese family, his wife and uh, the rest of the extended family. And he will also invite, inshallah, his family from back home in Pakistan to participate in the presentation. So it really is a small world when we are able to share presentations like this with you and show you how interconnected the world World and all of its peoples and this ummah really is inshallah so until tomorrow when we meet up for that special presentation from Guyana till then bye bye for now and assalamu alaikum